What if I told you that you're going to make five to 10% less than your coworker for doing the same exact job? It's not because of your skin color, nor is it because of your gender. No, you make that much less because your coworker is considered more attractive. Ridiculous, right? Turns out that being considered more attractive can help you earn more money or can help you get better treatment in financial markets. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. A, an economist at Northern Kentucky University. I'm also an advocate for financial literacy education. My mission is to help you better understand how economics can help you make better decisions in life. In today's episode of Coffee with Dr. A, I want to talk about how a person's wages may not reflect their true value or what economists call the marginal productivity of labor. Go grab a cup of coffee and let's talk about economics of beauty. A recent paper written by Galina Hale, Tali Regev, and Yoba Rubinstein finds that attractiveness has a significant impact on job outcomes for PhD graduates. Graduates that are considering, considered more attractive are placed at higher ranked institutions and are cited more often. This bias on attraction is no different than in other industries. I recently read Daniel Hammermash's book, Beauty Pays, where he discusses how this beauty discrimination occurs in other professions. I'll link to the book in the bio of this uh, video. First, let us evaluate what economics has to say about how wages are determined in markets where information is readily available to all people. In that case, then the wage should equal the additional value that a person brings to the firm. That means if a firm increases the productivity by $40,000 by adding you on, then you should earn $40,000. To simplify the concept of marginal product of labor, we will refer to this as the additional value an employee brings to their company. The marginal product of labor falls with each additional worker. As we grow, our company, each additional employee helps increase value, but the additional value is lower than the person before. So companies will only hire more workers as long as the marginal product of labor is higher or equal to the cost of wages. In theory, this is great. However, this is not how it works in discriminatory markets. The research on discrimination finds that there are differences in how much people get paid for the same job. The racial wage gap and the gender wage gap are well documented. While researchers are still working on figuring out how wide the gap is, it is well accepted that underrepresented minorities and women receive lower wages for the same job. In 1994, Dan Hammermash and Jeff Biddle wrote a paper in a leading economic journal on this topic. The paper titled Beauty and Labor Markets examined the impact of looks on earnings. To quote their findings here, quote, plain people earn less than the average looking people who earn less than good looking people. They find that being plain is associated with five to 10% wage reduction. This finding holds for men and women. However, for women being unattractive is also associated with lower rates of labor force participation, and they are more likely to marry men with less education. Hammermash and Biddle show that attractiveness discrimination is largest in uh, work that requires public interaction, jobs like salesperson and lawyers. Other researchers have found that being physically attractive person makes that person more confident, and this confidence makes employers consider them more able for the work. People considered attractive also tend to have better communication and social skills. There are obviously a lot of questions left unanswered here. How do you determine attractiveness? Um, attractiveness is subjective and may vary by race, culture, and it might be correlated with other forms of discrimination. So the question is, how do we move forward from here? In free market economics, it's assumed that it isn't say, sustainable to have wages that do not reflect true productivity. If you're interested in that line of thought, check out Gary Becker's work on discrimination. The reality is labor markets uh, lack perfect information and they lack free entry and exit, two of the most important assumptions of perfectly competitive markets. Don't believe me? Try asking people about their wages. Ask them how much they make. How do you think that conversation would go? 
In economics, when markets fail, one possible solution is to regulate the market. But how do you regulate beauty, a subjective measure, in the labor market? Hammermash argues that beauty discrimination is no different from racial or gender discrimination and unattractive people should be legally protected. But there are arguments against this. Some people argue that more attractive individuals do in fact bring more value to the firm. Being more attractive is associated with higher levels of confidence and better social or soft skills. This might be beneficial in outward facing jobs, like I said, in sales or law, or jobs that require interaction with the public. Since beauty is subjective, if we want to offer legal protection, protection for, I'm gonna quote here, ugly people, how is it determined? There are no standard measurements that we can use to determine someone's attractiveness. No wonder that our society is obsessed with looks. It turns out that beauty pays higher wages, better jobs, and for academics, more citations. Question of the day, do you find these results surprising? Did you know that beauty pays? Leave a comment about this video in the comment section. I want to thank the EI District for sponsoring this video today. The EI District is a leading entrepreneurship consulting firm. Its mission is to increase small business and entrepreneurship activity. Learn more about the EI District by visiting their website through the link in the description below. See you next week on Coffee with Dr. A.